So what we're talking about here is thus far five principles of mental training visualization that are well established from the scientific research literature. In fact, I haven't mentioned this uh, quite yet, and I'll refer to some other references, but there's a wonderful systematic review of a large number of studies that have looked at mental training and visualization, what's effective, what's less effective across a bunch of different disciplines that include education, medicine, music, psychology, and sports. The title of the paper is Best Practice for Motor Imagery, a Systematic Literature Review on Motor Imagery Training Elements in Five Different Disciplines. As the title suggests, it's mainly for motor imagery training, but it extends into music, which of course involves motor training and execution, but as well as education. This review establishes a number of different important things. I'm going to read off some of the um, key or uh, highlight takeaways. For instance, I described principle one of effective mental training and visualization, which is that the visualization be brief and it be simple and it be repeated. You may ask um, how many times that very brief five to 15 second uh, exercise of going through some routine should be repeated. Well, different studies have used different ranges of let's call them repetitions in a given training session. But the number that seems to be most effective is somewhere between 50 and 75 repeats per session. That brings about the question of how long one should rest between each repeat. This gets a little tricky depending on what you're trying to do. Remember that we have this kind of threshold of about 15 seconds for completion of the entire motor sequence. Let's say what you're trying to do, like a golf swing takes you five seconds to imagine in your mind's eye from the point where you, let's just say, have the ball on the tee, you bring the, the golf club up, you might reposition your, your feet just a little bit, you know, that kind of little wiggle that golf golfers do, and then the swing. If that whole thing takes five seconds in your mind's eye and roughly five seconds in the real world, well, then you'd be able to repeat it, of course, three times in 15 seconds. That would be one repetition, even though you're doing it three times. So it's one 15-second epoch, as it's sometimes called, E-P-O-C-H, epoch. And then you would rest for an approximately equivalent amount of time, 15 seconds or so, and then repeat, and rest 15 seconds or so, and then repeat. Rest 15 seconds, and then repeat. Again, three golf swings within that 15 seconds, rest 15 seconds. Truth told, these epochs and these rest periods do not need to be exact. You could imagine, for instance, that you get three repetitions of the swing within 14 seconds. Well, then do you do another one or do you wait until the end of that 15 seconds? I encourage you not to obsess too much about those sorts of points. Rather, you want to do as many repeats as you can in about a 15 second epoch and then rest for about 15 seconds and then repeat for a total of 50 to 75 repetitions, which might not sound like a lot to some of you, might sound like an awful lot to others of you. To me, it sounds like a lot, you know, 50 repetitions of something where you're trying to concentrate in your mind's eye on getting something accomplished over and over and over again in exactly the same way might seem like a lot. Mental training and visualization can be effective, however, at increasing the accuracy or the frequency at which you can do that real world behavior. So if normally you're only hitting the, the golf ball correctly, say 10% of the time, mental training and visualization can really help bring that number up. But it is important that you are able to successfully complete that motor task in the real world. Similarly for performance of cognitive tasks. So say for instance, um, speaking a new language, uh, you might ask, well, gosh, what, what in the landscape of speaking a new language can be restricted to five to 15 seconds where I could repeat it anywhere from, you know, th one to three times in a given epoch and then rep and then keep repeating 50 to 75 times. Well, there I would encourage you to pick something that you are able to do perhaps very slowly. So to speak a particular sentence, but with some challenge in getting the accent and the enunciation right, but you've completed it successfully before and you want to get more smooth and more fluid with it.